Model steam engines for beginners, part 30. This video shows part of a collection of model steam engines that are very suitable for beginners to the hobby. I look at some small Stuart engines and the Cotswold Heritage Perseus. If you want to build your own steam engine, as a beginner I cannot recommend the smaller Stuart engines. In my opinion, building a Stuart Victoria steam engine is a better idea because it's bigger and most of the parts are not too fiddly to machine. Over the next few episodes of this series, I'll go through quite a lot of engines which are very good to build and work on and play with. To have a closer look at some of these engines, here's the first one. This is a Stuart Models No. 10V built from a factory machine kit. In fact, quite a few models in this collection were built from factory machine kits, and some haven't even been built yet. What I intend to do is put these in the workshop and test each one. I will repair or adjust each of the engines so they work to optimum. Note to self, I think it's a good idea to tighten up this flywheel, so I did just that, and here it is back on the plinth. This engine turns over very freely, and I look forward to running all of these engines on steam. Well, the ones that are finished anyway. And here is another Stuart No. 10H model. This one's a good bit older though, the flywheel's different. And this one's not been built from a factory kit, but once it's been through my workshop it will run like a Swiss watch. You can clearly see the difference in the style of flywheel from the old one in the foreground and the new one in the background. They're still basically the same engine, it's just the flywheel's different. Even though this Stuart 10H is not built from a factory kit, it's well built, and it turns over very freely. This engine is going to need a little bit of attention because it's partly dismantled and the studs on the steam chest aren't long enough. By the time I finish with it, it will be good. And the next engine on the table, this is a part finished Stuart Models No. 10V and it's not a factory kit. The machining looks like it's been carried out to a good standard and everything rotates freely. And the way that the lower cylinder cover moves up and down with the piston tends to make me think that the gland's been packed as well. There is a bit of a problem with this engine though, I noticed it as I was handling it. The base is broken, it's obviously been dropped. Although these bases on number 10s are not all that strong, I once sent one in the post up to Scotland and it got broken in the post and it was well packed too. The easiest fix would be to use some JB weld on the inside of the casting and then smooth it out, no one would ever know, once it had been filled and painted, that it had been broken. But, I may even have one of these sat about in the workshop, and failing that, they are available from Stuart Models, and they're not expensive. The good thing about this number 10 is the hard stuff's been done. The drillings from the edge of the cylinder have been drilled correctly. The next engine to look at is the Stuart S50. These are very popular horizontal mill type engines. Everything rotates as freely as it should do, and I can't initially see any problems with this engine. In the collection, there are two of these S50s, and one is better than the other, cosmetically speaking, and engineering-wise, it's probably about the same. Both of these Stuart S50s are quite old, because as far as I'm aware, they use cast iron now for the cylinder and the steam chest and the steam chest cover, but on both of these S50 steam engines, the cylinder parts are made from gunmetal. And the other good thing about these two engines is the fact that the run out on the flywheel is absolutely minimal. And that's a good thing because usually on engines of this type, the flywheels wobble a bit. So what else is in the collection? Well, this is a Perseus engine. This isn't a Stuart engine. This is a Cotswold Heritage Perseus, originally designed by Edgar T. Westbury, who was a very well-known model engineer, and a lot of his designs for both steam engines and internal combustion engines were published in series formats in the Model Engineer magazine. The paint's slightly marked on this one, and particularly on the connecting rod, because the connecting rod is not made from steel, it's made from what looks to be either brass or gun metal, and it's quite easy to scrape off, but it would also be quite easy to remove all of it, and either leave it as brass or gun metal, or repaint it. This engine is complete with the original box, a certificate of authenticity, and even the invoice. And as you can see, it cost £256.30 in 2012. This is a Cotswold Heritage aerial steam engine. I built one of these into a steam plant for a customer a while back. 
and when it's fully assembled it builds into a really good engine. This is the main built up part of the engine and the other parts are on this card. The only thing wrong with this is there are no nuts and bolts but suitable bolts should be readily available. I'll have a look what I've got in the workshop. This is the first of the S50s. It needs an inlet and an outlet and generally checking over. For the exhaust outlet I'm going to use a 3 16 by 40 elbow because this is in scale with the engine and it will be a very easy job to fit an extension pipe to carry the exhaust away from the engine. I would just silver solder a copper pipe onto the existing nut that fits on the elbow. I've made a steam inlet adapter and here I'm applying some Loctite 542 before screwing it in place. This adapter is quarter by 40 threads per inch on the outer part and quarter by 32 threads per inch on the inner part to fit the engine. That's because generally speaking when I make up piping I would normally use quarter by 40 threads per inch union fittings not quarter by 32 threads per inch. Is it going to work? Before I find that out I'm going to lubricate every moving part of the engine because the engines are very dry because they haven't been run for a long time. Lubrication is very important. It's never a good idea just to put some compressed air into an engine and hope it works. You would probably find that it would work, but it's always a good idea to oil the engine first. As well as oiling the main bearings, don't forget the eccentric and of course the big end. And that looks okay, it feels much better already. And most importantly, don't forget to put some oil into the steam chest before you run the engine to oil the cylinder and the valve. I'm also putting a bit of oil, probably too much, on the valve rod. I should have done this when I oiled the piston rod. But anyway, it's done now and the engine is ready to run. All I need is some compressed air. On the first run, it's a good idea to keep the air pressure low just to make sure everything's okay. And in this case, it is. Now I've turned the pressure up to about 30 pounds per square inch. Well, that runs very sweetly. The only thing I can fault it on is a bit of a leak around the steam chest, which is easily rectified by a gasket. First of all, though, I'll try tightening up the nuts on the steam chest, being very careful not to shear them off. Yes, this is running very smoothly. There's a tiny bit of run out on the flywheel, but it's very little and nothing to worry about. I've found with flywheel run out that a lot of the time it's because the hole in the flywheel is slightly too big and once the pinch bolt holds the flywheel in place on the crankshaft, it moves it over to one side slightly. But on this engine, it's so little, it's hardly worth the trouble removing the flywheel and trying to reseat it in a different position. And that concludes part 30 of Model Steam Engines for Beginners. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.